Hey guys, Dave from Wolfheart Hobbying here, and today I've got a terrain tutorial for you on how I made my Eldar rune stones. Uh, this is a very fast, easy uh, piece of terrain to make. You can make a bunch of them within uh, an hour or two, uh, and uh, you're also going to be using recyclable materials, so let's uh, dive right in. So to get us started, we're going to take our um, liquid juice bottle. Uh, this one is uh, Dasani. Uh, there's other companies out there like Mio, uh, things like that, no name brands. But this one has the uh, shape I, I like and it's also the one my family drinks a lot of. So uh, we're recycling this, which is always a good thing. Uh, and um, again, it's very easy to make, very cheap to make. Uh, it only costs, this only costs a couple bucks and then your paints are going to cost you, that's about it. So to get us started, we're going to come in with the hobby knife and gently score down the middle of the wrapper to remove it. <clears throat> and uh, again, with a knife, please be careful not to cut yourself and uh, use uh, appropriate safety precautions. So with the wrapper removed, uh, we're now going to take off the uh, lid here. Um, just so that we can glue it down. Uh, you could clean the inside of the ball if you wanted to. You don't really need to. It's not going to mold or rot or anything like that. But we need to glue this cap on just um, so that when we go to paint or do our next step, we're going, it won't move on us. So bringing in the hot glue gun here, just filling in where the, uh, the neck of the bottle sits inside this cap. And... Uh, Sorry for the shaky hands here guys, but essentially just fill in as much glue as you want. Uh, pop the lid back on, give it a few seconds to cool down and uh, it will hold that part of the cap on really tight. Now we need to uh, also glue down the top uh, part of the lid um, because when uh, we do our cutting back, that lid will slide and spin around. And now, so just filling in that hole, uh, you can put as much glue here as you want, it's up to you. You don't need a lot, but just pop the cap back on and give it a few seconds to uh, cool down and clean up any spider webs that you may get. So now there's that little lip that helps you pop the cap up and these um, hinges uh, to, we need to cut those away. Uh, so that they're not protruding off the stone and give us a hopefully a nice smooth uh, finish on this So coming in with the hobby knife again being very careful. This is uh, Very sharp Watch what you're doing, but just uh, try and follow the curve of the lid as much as possible when you're shaving this uh, these hinges back and the lid that way there's uh, not a lot of gaps and holes that you'd have to fill in after. But just shave this, uh, this bit of plastic off. So we get it's almost a smooth transition there. It is bumpy, but we're going to fix that after we're going to fill it in. Now when you're cutting these hinges, be careful because they can just pop at any time and you don't want to cut yourself but uh, it does leave a hole but we will be filling that in uh, in, a, in a minute and again just following the uh, trying to follow the curve as much as possible of the bottle so that there's not a lot of after work and with the front again uh, being very very careful to not cut towards yourself um, just doing a little sawing motion here as my blade is a isn't as sharp as it should be but Just being careful and cutting off that lip now as you can see I cut a little bit too much off uh, leaving a big hole there, but uh, once we fill it in it Won't be that uh, big of an issue. So one method is you could fill this in with uh, hot glue um, It's a fast way get these guys done uh, and as you can see here in this example I've done one in uh, with hot glue and you just uh, put a big blob and uh, cut it back but uh, at the back here it doesn't really clean up all that nice so 
Uh, it's up to you on how fast you want to get these terrain pieces done. You can pop these guys in the fridge for a couple seconds and they'll cool off right away. The other method, and which is the method I like to use, is uh, you can use um, drywall compound or spackling, plaster, uh, goes by a bunch of different names. Um, but I find this one gives the best smooth uh, finish. Uh, it's not perfect in any way, but it, I find it is a lot better than the hot glue uh, method. So this is the method, I'm going to show you both methods here, but this is the one I like. Uh, you can also fill in this, um, the line where the cap meets the, uh, the lid. So it's all personal preference. Again, uh, the plaster does take a while to dry uh, and takes a few more steps, but uh, you get, I find you get a better uh, result overall. Okay, so to get us started uh, with this, we're going to come in with our uh, plaster or our spackling. And I'm just using uh, DAP wallboard joint compound. Uh, I think this was like eight bucks uh, Canadian. So, uh, but you can find this stuff at, at hardware stores and things like that. Uh, so you're going to mix it up and uh, we're just going to take a, a toothpick or you can take a toothpick, sorry, or a popsicle stick as I'm using here and glob it on. Um, that's uh, pretty much what I do just because if you try and thin it out and uh, s smooth it out right now, it does take uh, a lot more steps. It does take a lot more time as, as you're gonna need to put in uh, a couple layers of this stuff. But if you just glob it on, I find uh, it uh, works pretty good. Um, you don't want to thin it out too much as there is not a lot of grip to the plastic. It will uh, it will thin out too much and come off. So just globbing it on like that. And then we're just going to set that aside to let it dry. And uh, now to show you the hot glue method. This one is pretty straightforward. Um, just put a whole bunch of hot glue right in the holes and then bring it out so that you can uh, attempt to smooth off the edges and give a nice transition. And here we are, just filling in the back holes there. Uh, this method is faster than the plaster as uh, again, you could just pop this in a fridge for a couple seconds. The glue will cool down and harden uh, pretty much straight away. So. It's all dependent, again, on how fast you want to get uh, this stuff on the table. So the um, the plaster will take a little bit to dry, so we'll come back to that uh, once it's all dry. Okay, so now we've got uh, the plaster's all dry and the glue is nice and hard. Um, the plaster took maybe about an hour to dry but uh, again, it's gonna give us a better finish, I find. So we have these globs of glue here and now we need to cut them back. So I'm bringing this adjustable X-Acto knife um, just because uh, I wanna get it all cut right away and it does bend a little bit more than the hobby knife. So just slowly, slowly doing a sawing motion here, just cutting back that glue. Um, Again, this is a very sharp blade, so you want to be very careful um, not to cut yourself and also not to cut too deep uh, into the plastic. Uh, shaving a little bit is okay, but if you cut too deep, then you got another hole you need to fill. And just to show you the sawing motion here, um, this is why we also glued down the cap because uh, first time I did this, that cap popped off and ripped off all the glue as well. So it just gave it a little bit more strength for this cutting process. And now you just clean up the back as much as you can to give it a nice smooth uh, transition. And same thing for the front here. Nice short sawing motions. Um, I am cutting towards myself. Do not do this. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to disregard my own safety uh, precautions and warnings but just shaving it back just a little bit ever so slightly 
and there you have it so that's done we're just going to try and clean up the edges um, and uh, get that a little bit smoother if we can uh, you could try sanding it down but hot glue doesn't really sand that nicely so we're going to put that one off to the side right now and now we're going to come to our plaster uh, so taking our same hobby knife here uh, you also want to make sure that it is nice and hard so I'm just giving a couple taps here it's not mushy so it's nice and hard so what we're going to do is essentially just chip at the plaster now if you wanted to get the lines uh, from the the top part of the cap there if you want those to stay fill in I would s skip this step and uh, just go to the next step but um, because I don't want a lot of after work here I just want to chip away what isn't uh, filling a hole or a major hole I should say and uh, just to cut down on a lot of the after work uh, in the next step so I just go around and gently chip um, because this, it will uh, pull away uh, the plaster that is in the hole and uh, we don't want that because then we'd have to put more in. So here I chipped away and there's a little bit too much that came out which uh, is not what we want. So with uh, the majority of the plaster chipped off now what we're going to do is come in with our sanding block here and we're just going to sand it all down. Um, this gives it a nice smooth finish um, it, it, it makes it look a lot nicer than the glue um, but it does take a little bit more time for the drying process so as you can see here it's already uh, looking nice and smooth gonna sand it down a little bit more um, but again if you wanted those lines filled in you could just uh, skip the chipping process and go straight to the sanding here. Now the middle part of the plaster in between those two hinges kind of came off during the sanding process but that's okay because sanding down the plastic will uh, smooth that any of that issue out and uh, and of course sand over the whole entire bottle just to give your paint something to grip onto. So to base coat it we're gonna use Krylon camouflage here it's an ultra flat color uh, this one's beige uh, so this one's gonna be my primer slash base coat um, and this stuff dries relatively quick as well and then um, but you can use whatever color you want uh, just make sure it's ultra flat you don't want a shine or a gloss to it and uh, as you can see here on this finished one, it's got a lot of speckles and looks like sand and stuff on it. To get that effect, I come in with another spray paint of Krylon Natural Stone. Uh, this one's uh, a little bit more of an off-white beige, uh, which is great because I use this to also highlight as well as give me the sand effect. So you spray, um, spray a little bit on, your base color will show through and it'll just give you these speckles of sand and these black specks here but if you want the, the the white to show through then you spray a lot on now with that uh, the base coat and the uh, sandstone effect done uh, I've got the two bottles here uh, this one here was the hot glue one and as you can see the back part of it is kind of a mess which is okay it's just a quick piece of terrain uh, you're not going to be spending a lot of time looking at it but uh, me being a little bit of a perfectionist I kind of like the look of here you can see it didn't fill in the hole all the way here but you can say the stone was chipped or uh, whatever uh, but it gives it a nicer finish than the glue does and we're just going to whip over here to the back as you can see smooth almost you could not even tell that there was a lid there if you just saw that part um, so that's uh, oh, camera out of focus here. There we go. So uh, you look at what side you want to choose. So obviously, I'm not going to choose this side for the um, for the hot glue version. I'm going to use the front as uh, it looks a lot nicer, and then I'm going to use the back part for the plaster one. Now to get our inspiration for the runes, I come in and. Uh, just use my Eldar book and if you go to the Autark or Otark page it gives you um, a lot of 
uh, runes that you can choose from. Um, it's describing the Eldar language, but as you can see, there's lots of runes to choose from. Uh, you can make up your own as well, but uh, I like I, I wanted to keep the theme of Eldar. So you pick three runes or however many runes you want to put on the stone, and um, then just coming in with a uh, a very fine point uh, sharpie pen here, uh, as you can see here. I'm just going to uh, basically outline the ruin on the stone. Being very careful not to press too hard as uh, you could pull up some of the paint. So you just want to do it gently because it's just an outline, it's just a guide. And with this, I am now done my third ruin. So already you can see how it's coming together. Uh, our next step is we're going to start painting the ruins, kind of giving them uh, a little bit of a glow effect. Um, so to get us started, I'm going to go with blues, but you can use whatever color you want. And the blue I'm going to start with is Vallejo model color medium blue. Uh, and then all we really do is uh, with our paint thin down just a little bit as the stone will kind of uh, suck up a lot of the paint is just going to fill in our drawing. Again, uh, with the marker just being a guide, you can take, you could break out into any kind of freehanding if you want. Uh, spice up the ruin a little bit but that's the first base color and uh, I'm going to give this a couple minutes to dry uh, it doesn't need to be fully dried as the next step uh, if the paint uh, mixes in it does give it kind of a cool effect so with my detail brush I'm coming in with Vallejo model color deep sky blue now this is a very bright blue you could uh, make this transition by going to say a medium blue then to a brighter blue but for the purposes of just getting this uh, terrain piece done and on the table I'm just going straight to the bright blue as I don't want to spend a lot of time on this um, they're going to be on the table for a game you're not really using it for display purposes but if you wanted to you could make your uh, transitions from the darker blue up to a brighter blue uh, in however many steps you want And with this blue, I'm just, as you can see, filling in the middle of the ruin, leaving a bit of the darker blue as an outline. Um, as I want these ruins to kind of really stand out and show, show that they are glowing with a magical or whatever type of power source. And... Uh, Using the detail brush, it helps with curves um, and getting into small, small places like that little curve there. But this color you also do want to thin down as well, um, just so that uh, it spreads over the, the, the grit of the sand and the paint uh, a lot better. And with that, we're gonna let, uh, we're gonna let that dry. Again, you don't have to let it dry fully but it's already coming together. You could leave it at that if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna take it the next step and I'm just gonna come in with uh, a pure white. Uh, I'm using Vallejo again, uh, their model color white. Uh, and this is gonna be a very quick, um, I guess last highlight uh, of the power source. So this is gonna be in just, um, just uh, in some parts, you don't want to do a hole in the middle again, as uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work, but it also would take away from the effect. So, just in this triangle here, I'm just going to do a little dot. It's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but whatever. And then with this crescent moon here, just going to go in the middle, middle part of those um, shapes. Not the entirety of the ruin, but as you can see there, just kind of branched it out a little bit. Kind of almost where the ruin meets or curves is where I put uh, put this white highlight.
And with this highlight too, you could also um, mix down uh, the white into the, the deep sky blue if you wanted to uh, and, and do it that way. It might, uh, might look a little nicer. Again, just trying to get this done and as quickly as possible. Don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I uh, I do make these in batches, so uh, I want to get them done pretty quick. And with that, the rune stone is done. And that's as far as I take this. You could do other effects on it if you wanted to. Uh, it's up to you, but that's essentially it. And again, you can make them in batches if you've got enough of the bottles lying around. As you can see here, I've made four or five of them um, in just this one tutorial, actually. So you can use different runes and everything like that to convey whatever you want. But that's essentially it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you'd uh, like to see more terrain tutorials from me, uh, just let me know in the comment section. Follow me on Facebook at Wolfheart Hobbying. Uh, like, subscribe for more videos. Check out other painting tutorials I've done. Thanks, guys, and have yourselves a great day.